Darius Sneed. Remember this name. Him and I linked up to talk about his album, Lost and Found. Yeah, they would assume that I was a gospel artist. And, you know, at the end of the day, I am a gospel artist. I, I, I truly, like, I hold near and dear to that. Gospel has had a big part of my upbringing. Plus, music by UK artist Daughter of Eve, Chance Thomas, and our guest tastemaker, Derek Chi of Gospel Hydration, shares two songs you should be listening to. His, his sound is very... He's, he keeps that old school R&B flavor, but brings it into like a gospel sounding track as well. So get ready, because it's time to rediscover and refill your playlist with the best in Christian music. I'm Anthony B. Mitchell, and this is The Refill. Episode 2 starts now. This is The Refill Podcast. This is The Refill Podcast. Every episode is accompanied by a playlist of all the songs you're about to hear. Links are available in the show notes so you can catch the full song. This is my morning track before I head into work. Here's Working featuring Lil Sko on The Refill. Working, 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 you know, we we always talk about um, as as far as like rappers go, or you know, we always talk about being on our grind. I'm on my grind. I'm on my grind. I'm on my grind. But you know, we as Christians, you know, we take a look in the Bible, like it talks about work over and over and over and over again, and and so like there's a way that you should go about doing work. Whether that's at your 9 to 5, whether that's at home with your family, whether that's grinding on music, recording, you know, doing anything and doing anything in excellence is all about work. I, I done came and left to Jesus, that's a search. Life an open book, put back the curse. I said work it because I know that I ain't perfect. Work it, work it, work it, work it, work it. So yeah, like get that promotion, keep working, work into the Lord, go to the gym, work out, do work at the house, use it to clean up on Saturdays, man. That's that's what I want y'all to do with this record. Thanks to Double ATL for taking the time to talk with me. It's the refill, and this is our tastemaker segment where we bring on guests bloggers from around the world to share artists you should check out we head out to the uk and welcome my guy derek chi of gospel hydration derek how you doing bro how you doing man i'm good i'm good thank you (laughs) that's good to hear bro uh before we go into the two songs that you're about to share uh tell the listeners a little bit about gospel hydration and why you started it okay so gospel hydration um been running now for just over two years and um I really felt that there needed to be more more music platforms for Christian music and Christian music which was alternative in in the sounds not just the worship music that is quite popular already so you have the um, gospel, grime, R&B, hip hop um, just all the different sound, sounds like that so that's why I really started it because I felt that it wasn't being promoted enough or a lot of people didn't really know it even existed so I thought let me just create a platform and try to get it out there was it a bit of a challenge for you in the beginning when you when you started this um at first it was a bit of a challenge because it was finding the artists which was quite difficult um because there wasn't that many but I think as it grew we started to like have more artists contacting us to actually help them with the promotion which was was really good so it's been sort of domino effect so at the beginning it was really difficult because we were trying to find artists and asking them um to submit tracks and different things like that so but now it's all it's all like running by itself now which is great (laughs) yeah man no that's amazing i think that's one of the reasons why uh, we started doing this podcast and one of the reasons why I definitely started doing the tastemaker segment because I wanted to have other people you know talk about um, the music that's out there and there's so much music out there that's great I mean obviously I can't get a hold of everything but it's nice that have to have other people again like I said um, kind of joining and, and sharing music that they feel people should listen to so thank you so much for for being a part of this man yeah no thank you for having me really appreciate it all right, boom. So now we got that out of the way. 
let's really dive into what you're really here for, and that is to share the two songs that I told you uh, in advance to choose. So go ahead and introduce the first song. So the track you're about to listen to is Laurel featuring Dominic Davis, Someone Like Me. What you want from me? I've done some bad things. Never in my dreams. Did I think you'd use someone like me? I was trying to keep it gangster, do whatever for the paper, gain the world and lose your whole soul. Is it worth going bankrupt? Inappropriate behavior, selling drugs to the All right, Derek, so I'm going to need you because, hold on, what is it? I think we, when you sent me the song, Laurel was an artist that I'd never, I'd never heard of, or at least I never heard his music. Um, I know you did put a, a post up about his, his new album that's coming out. Yeah. And uh, how you said it sounded different. Uh, can you tell us why you chose this song one, but then also if you're able to tell us a little bit about uh, Laurel's story? Yeah, because um, with Laurel, I think he's quite interesting. His sound is very, um, he's he keeps that old school R&B flavor, but brings it into like a gospel sounding track as well. And that's why I really like his music because it's very, it's very different. He hasn't tried to like follow the trend which is out now. He's very, he's kept it still very R and B, but also like really it's very like gospel influenced. And I really felt it was very different to what was being played like right now in the in the scene and just out in general. So I think Laurel like is really has really created a sound for himself, and you couldn't really compare him to many other gospel artists out there right so, yeah so why did you choose someone like me um i think that track is is very i think it definitely has a lot of r&b influence and i think having a, a female vocalist on it really made it stand out a lot more um and really kind of i would say brought brought a lot more of the r&b sound out because he's very R and B himself, but to have the collaboration, it was, it was really different, and it made it sound even better. I think. <laughs> so the next song is what the UK call drill music which used to be grime is is that is that correct oh no grime is still there but it's a it's another genre in itself um so you have grime and then you have drill as well oh, okay all right so because the, the thing with me is that um my introduction to i guess christian grime if you will call it that um was through listening to the sinai album and then being introduced to jahaziel and then that kind of brought me down the rabbit hole of um, watching the music video for Simply Andy's Bibles. Bibles. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Sim yeah Simply Andy Bibles, Bibles yeah. with Governor B and everyone. Yeah, that was... Yeah, yeah, yeah. man. So it, it's it's something that I've always uh, appreciated, um, especially, you know, coming from the UK. Um, and then, of course, over here listening to, to hip hop and, you know, East Coast, West Coast sound, whatever you name it. And then boom, you got the UK, you know, with, with the grime sound. So it's it's something that I appreciate it and, and I appreciate a lot. And I'm looking forward to like sharing this, yeah. this song for sure. Yeah, no, definitely. I think um, especially with the UK sound at the moment, there's a lot more Christian artists actually doing the sound. So you have um, so you have Mark Jones. Obviously, you have Governor B, like the big ones, and and then you have. Um, even Pressure J, there's a guy called Pressure, Pressure J. Pressure J, yeah, man, I know him. Yeah, he, he's 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 having a return actually soon. He's got a few tracks mm. coming out soon, which are going to be quite big. That's exciting, man. Well, look, there's so much music coming out, and we can obviously talk a lot about it. But we got to talk about this track, Gospel Hydration, and Mark Jones. This means that you know we're introducing Derek's debut of rapping here <laughs> on The Refill. You heard it here first? No, I'm joking. You heard I'm it here joking, first. Bro. I'm joking, bro. No. Well, okay, what's what's up with this track? Talk to me about this track called Wait. Um, introduce it to the people. Why is Gospel Hydration 
you know, connected uh, to this or how is gospel hydration connected to this song? Yeah, so we so we basically gospel hydration will produce the track um, and we'll get artists to feature on it who we feel that could actually fit the track. Um, so like I'm, I work more on the production side and then we think, OK, this artist will sound good on this. So we just get them on it to jump on it. And then it's like so, so it's our track, but then featuring <laughs> featuring the artist. Yeah. All right, well, then this is uh, Gospel Hydration featuring Mark Jones. Oh, actually, you know what? No, sorry. You introduced the track. I don't know why I, I did that. I'm sorry, bro. You introduced the track. Go ahead. Yeah, so this track is um, Gospel <laughs> Hydration featuring Mark Jones. Wait. It's the refill. Come through on a thing that's normal. Bitch just sent one beat and it's out of this world like it came for a portal. Gotta make the best of my life because I only got one. God knows that I'm mortal. So I saved up from early, bought me a home and I did it all lawful. You know that I did it all lawful. No way could I ever just back down. Live my life by faith, so if you see me, no gods in the background. Took a break for a bit and I sat down. Had to think why I do this thing and now I'm on smoke every time that I rap now. Seal's broken, I ain't going back now. Shield's gone, so it's time to attack now. Right now it's my season. Still all about freedom. Can't live like a slave no more. Trust me, my bro. That ain't no okay, so you already explained how you produce a track and then try and figure out who best fits the song. Yeah. Now, why choose Mark Jones for this specific track? Yeah, um, with this one, because because of how it is, like it's drill and it's UK grime, um, a lot of the artists here, they're very freestyly, as in um, they don't really have, you won't, with grime and drill, you don't really have a particular theme. Like you couldn't give them a particular theme for the track. A lot of it is very just straight bars. Like it comes straight off like how they're how what they're thinking and feeling. So I said to him, just I sent him the the track and I was like, like what do you feel from this? Like what what could you do from this? And then he just wrote to it. And then we just came out with weight. <laughs> some with the dark, some sight like Pluto. The way I gave my life for the sensei, you would have thought that I'd taken up judo. No games, so I never played Cluedo. In the studio, get real active. But the bass size big like Well, you've given us your two tracks. Yeah. So uh, thank you for taking the time to do this, Derek. No, thank you for having me. Really <laughs> Safe to say you're going to have, uh, we're going to have you on in the future, right? 100%. <laughs> nice. Remember, full tracks will be provided in the show notes. Coming up, we have our interview with Darius Sneed and a DITC classic I'm super excited about. That's coming up on The Refill. This is The Refill Podcast. This is The Refill Podcast. The heart is so deceitful. The mind at times wanders off to wicked spaces My actions ever changing Every day I further prove I'm inadequate to live and move on my own This being insufficient, far from sinless To someone else I belong There must be a God somewhere um, so, I wrote uh, this song in 2013. Um, I was still pretty new to the faith. Um, and it was just one of the guys from the band, his name is Daryl Hobbs. Uh, he plays keys and he gave me a track and asked me to write to it. Um, and at that time I was just very like deeply introspective. And um, so I started thinking about you know all the flaws, all the things that make up who I am as a human being and thinking about those things in light of who God is. And so, you know, as inductive reasoning is like giving evidence that reaches an ultimate conclusion. Um, and so that's kind of what happens in the song, just kind of a journey of me listing out all the flaws, all the imperfections that I have, and that it ultimately points to a God who is greater and bigger and higher than I am. I'm inadequate to live and move on my own. Cause I'm a being insufficient, far from sinless to someone else I belong. There must be a God somewhere. Oh, oh, oh. There must be a God somewhere. Yeah. 
so I just want uh, the listeners to to listen to it and just walk away really being able to like you know evaluate um, their life um, in light of God in light of who he is um, and but also not to just like stay there because sometimes we could you know easily talk about you know who we are and we can get in this kind of downward spiral and it kind of makes us depressed, especially when we're thinking about, you know, a holy sovereign God in light of who we are. But um, it's really just to kind of point to to Christ ultimately so that although we're flawed, although we're imperfect, we um, have a God who's, you know, purchased us and saved us from our sins. And so now we are able to strive to be more like him. So hopefully it would give people uh, encouragement uh, walking away that you can be imperfect but serve a perfect God and that he would cover those things someone who righteous oh, someone consistent yeah, someone sufficient. that was Chance Thomas and the track is called Inductive Reasoning thanks to her for talking to me and now we go into our album review. I was looking forward to talking to this artist, and um, we we have on the line, and he just released the album Lost and Found, and we're going to dive into two songs that were my favorite from the project. Darius Sneed, welcome, bro, to the refill. I'm so glad to be here, man. Thank you for having me. Not a problem, man. When when I heard about this album, I thought at first uh, this was going to be an EP, but this is a, a full and amazing, I might add, album. Uh, it's a full album. I uh, yeah, full <laughs> album. Nice. And you know what? Well, let's go into the title yes. of this album, Lost and Found. Why give the album this title? Uh, for two reasons. I was um, in a season when I was writing this album where I kind of felt really alone, which you're going to hear a lot um, through the music. You're going to hear those kind of lyrics. And so... Um, my only safety guard was like being in, being in the presence of God. Like I love writing, I love music in general, and I find God um, through through music. I hear Him more, I, I talk to Him more, I, I listen more, and not just through like I mean Christian. But I listen to old 80s stuff from Whitney Houston to Prince to um, Patti LaBelle. Um, it just all kinds of music, and it's just kind of like one of those things where I got lost in His presence, and I also was found in His presence, um, and so both of those things can happen there. But then there's also this like other part, which it's interesting is I also felt lost as if like I, you, I couldn't be found, and God found me in those moments too. So mm-hmm. both of those meanings kind of applied to the season that I was in, and I wanted to write about it. Well, I think that's a perfect segue into Best Days. And when I heard this track, I was like, okay, this this is a perfect morning song. Actually, I imagined if there was a, a music video, it would be following your day. And then once you hit the guitar solo, there would be like a flash mob with you in the streets. Yeah. That's that's just where my mind goes yeah. when I hear this song. We might yeah. have to talk to Rachel about trying to make this happen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's a great idea, man. We'll have to have you come down and direct a shoot. That's yeah. awesome. <laughs> well, um, I, I love how encouraging this song is. And aside from where you created this album from, you know, where you felt lost. Was there another reason that brought you to write this song specifically? Yeah, so you know what? Uh, what's so interesting was I knew I had to get back in the studio um, this uh, last year in the summer, um, and I had just finished recording uh, the song Here and Now, um, and I had learned that my grandfather had passed away, Pastor Ralph Godfrey Sr. in Cincinnati, Ohio. He was the pastor of New Life Temple Church. And um, it was a weird, weird season for me because we just got done doing like nine services for Easter at Mariner's Church, where, where I serve as a worship pastor. Um, and, um, you know, then I have this tragic news about my grandfather passing away. And I came home and it just felt like things weren't lining up and mentally, um, I was having some struggles mentally just about my music career and uh, disappointment and also just within myself. I was doubting myself and a lot of things and um, it didn't seem as if my best days were ahead. Um, but I, my mentor, his name is Pastor John Norman. He's a pastor of a Hillsong Network church over in England. He said I was following him for a season and uh, every time he got done doing a leadership talk or preaching, he would declare that the best days were yet to come. And um, I like 
kind of just remembered that moment and those moments I had with him. And the best days is all about alignment. It's about even though you may not feel like the best days are here, that the truth is the best is yet to come. And the Bible says that our worst days are behind us and our best is in front of us. In front of us. And so um, I wanted to write something that, that really spoke to that. And actually, um, in the song, I felt like using very general language because so many people in this world um, who don't listen to Christian music um, would listen to this song because everyone needs hope at some point. I think everyone's hungry for hope. Uh, they don't know what they're starving for, uh, even in their situations. I just got done watching um, uh, a documentary on Mac Miller, and it's like, man, I wish, I wish he could have uh, have known that his best days were ahead. It's really sad. Like, no matter what position people are in, whether they're wealthy, whether they're poor, many people go to sleep at night hating themselves or hating their lives and not having hope for tomorrow. And so, um, I wrote this song to help people to sing a song in spite of their current condition and in spite of their uh, their current atmosphere to align their hearts and their minds with the truth um, and to allow hope to enter into that space so that they can take a step forward into what the best is in the future for them. Perfect. Well, you you basically explained uh, what Best Days is about, so why not go ahead and uh, introduce it? Yes, definitely. Hi, everybody. My name is Darius, and you're about to listen to my new single, Best Days. My Best Days! All right, the other thing about Best Days is that it has this cool little gospel flip at the end that goes into the next track. Did you grow up listening to gospel music? I, I didn't want to assume you did, but I, I kind of got the vibe that uh, that you, you did listen to gospel yeah. music, or at least grew up with it. Yeah, I appreciate that. That's actually very nice of you. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, well yes. sorry, before you continue, let me say why. It's because most of the songs I've listened to uh, that you, you've released um, have a pop sound to it. So I'm assuming that people look at you and don't expect you to produce pop or a pop sound. Yes. <laughs> right, okay. And that was what was refreshing for me because you did it in a way that was seamless. It didn't feel forced or anything like that. So that's what made me think, okay, you probably have a gospel background or uh, gospel music is, as your root. If, if you will. Wow. Well, thank you, man. That's very kind. Um, and uh, I, I appreciate that. A lot of a lot of people do assume, mostly because of my skin color and the way that I sing when they see me in yeah. church. Yeah, yeah. Would, I was trying. I was yeah. trying not to. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying not to say that. Yeah, they would assume that I was a gospel artist. And, yeah. you know, at the end of the day, I am a gospel artist. I, I, I truly, like, I hold near and dear to that. Gospel has had a big part of my upbringing. Mm. I just all listened to growing up. And so what was playing through our home um, as a kid was the Winans um, and a lot of like praise and worship stuff kind of so like old school Ron Cannoli um, and then uh, we would have Commission BB and CC Winans um, and then as I got older Fred Hammond and uh, Kirk Franklin were just kind of hitting the scene and they were changing the game and Vanessa Bell Armstrong so those were big names um, when I got into my teens I found out about a group that I fell in love with the Clark Sisters I love the Clark Sisters, and then uh, YouTube. Well, actually, over MySpace, um, I saw people were posting YouTube videos, and this one video of this this lady blaring. I mean, just her voice was blaring, and I go. Wow, I've never seen her before. I click her, her name. Her name was Elbernita Twinkie Clark. And I go, maybe she's related to the Clark sisters because I had only known about a few of the Clark sisters who were doing their solo projects at the time. Um, and so, man, when I started researching her, Twinkie Clark, that became my favorite artist. So between her, Fred Hammond, and then um, Israel Houghton, which what's funny actually about Fred and Israel was I used to, my, my mom and dad would buy me the DVDs of Fred Hammond's um, live concerts. 
and when you, actually they were VHSs at the time. I, <laughs> I seem so old. I was trying not to say I'm anything. only 28, but you know, <laughs> I lived through that whole weird transition yeah, to VHS man. to DVD, and yeah, now it's all mean? Netflix and you know all this stuff. So yeah. I've seen like every season of that, and um, I would sit in front of the TV and copy Fred Hammond's every move, how he moved his gestures, how he sang, and people when I started singing, people would tell me, "You're not Fred Hammond. You don't have to sound like him." But in my head, like they didn't know what I, <laughs> they didn't know what was happening behind the scenes so um fred hammond was my main influence and he used to play the bass which at, i was a kid i thought the bass and the guitar were the same thing so for christmas one year i said i really want a guitar like fred hammond mom and dad so they got me a guitar and i was frustrated because it didn't sound like what he had and i was like why is it so high you know um and then uh fred hammond came out with a record called purpose by design and his live record was in um, Las Vegas and so I watched that VHS and on that VHS on a song called Do Not Pass Me By he brought out a light skinned guy named Israel Houghton he played guitar on that song and I said oh my goodness I want it my guitar sounds like that so um, shortly after that Israel put out some records he put out Real and uh, New Season and then Another Level and my uncle and my aunt would buy me their uh, his like song books in the back they had guitar chords in it so I would learn the guitar chords so you know over time there was like this I loved gospel I loved praise and worship and then um, I started singing jazz and um, going to a predominantly white high school I was learning a lot about different bands like Coldplay I found out who Coldplay was in high school uh, Red Hot Chili Peppers all these different bands and I became so attracted to that music and what I was hearing and I started listening to more Stevie Wonder and um, jazz people like Ella Fitzgerald and um, Mel Torme all these different artists and it just became like this thing where I learned to have an appreciation for all music um, and as you would listen to people like Twinkie Clark talk about her music she would go yeah some of my hit songs that crossed over were because I listened to a Pepsi commercial of Stevie Wonder um, and stuff like that you know so it was like you can tell gospel music was this thing where a lot of people respected the music um um, industry as a whole and they pulled a lot of those influences in um, so right now man like if you listen to this whole record you're going to hear you're going to hear my moments where I sit and listen to Twinkie Clark and the Clark sisters um, their 80s records you're going to hear Patti LaBelle you're going to hear Michael Jackson you're going to hear Fred and Israel Holton and then you're going to hear um, you're going to hear some like uh, St. Lucia, 1975, you're going to hear all these different bands, uh, Choice Savant, all these bands that have had such an influence on what I do today. So uh, when you hear Best Days, you're going to be like, oh man, that song is actually influenced by Prince and by uh, Walk the Moon, Nick Patrika and Walk the Moon. Those are my two reference tracks for that record uh, and, um, and also Whitney Houston's Dance with Somebody. Cool. That makes sense. That makes sense. Um, let's go into this next song because I know we're going to be wrapping up soon, but... Um this next song safe um yeah, yeah. talk to me a little bit about it yeah man you know what safe was my response to um a trigger of trauma i have some trauma with disappointment really bad and i you know like the phrase you can be dancing with broken bones and not even know it i I was doing that for years, I mean years and years, probably a good eight years all through college because so many people had promised me this and that concerning my career or just even friendships. I had so many friendships where people said they were going to be there for me and it just seemed like, you know, I was by my, I ended up by myself a lot of ways. Um, and so uh, last year, just a specific situation that happened and it wasn't really that terrible, but it kind of just triggered some old stuff, you know, and um, I, I had, to, I, when I got home, um, and Safe was actually the first song I wrote for this record, actually. <laughs> so, um, yeah. So when I got home that night, I texted my manager and I said, hey, I can't write. She said, Darius, just tap into what's hurting. I started hurting really bad and started thinking about what I wanted to feel. And I said, man, I want to feel safe. Um, there's a scripture in the Bible that says that uh, we can um, run into the strong tower and we will be safe. And, man, that's what I wanted. I wanted to feel safe. And so um, I wrote a song about that. And I was honest. Like, you know, I've I've had friends come and go. I've had people say this and that. Um, but the one thing that I do know is that God kept me safe in all of that. And the crazy thing about God that I love is that 
he probably was like the whole time, Darius, I'm here for you. I have your back. Uh, why don't you just start with me and then, you know, <laughs> or let me be the center of all of that so that you don't keep going through this big spiral and this cycle of disappointment. Um, and so, man, this song was, was that for me, for sure. I have seen mountain tops and I have seen valleys low, but I know that I have seen storms rolling and people come and they go, but I know that you'll never. So after listening to Safe, what do you hope the listener uh, will walk away with? Um, one thing I want you to walk away with is knowing that nothing is as bad as it seems. That every time something is happening in your life that can um, that seems like it's hurting you, know that all things are working together. Um, and that God is going to use that at some point. Also that God is already, there are things that I was so bent out of shape about that I had no idea that God had already had a plan. He was working something out. He was just wanting me to trust him. And I got so frustrated and flustered in that moment that I didn't realize that. And now that I look back at that moment, I go, man, I was a fool to think that, you know, um, I had that moment all in my hand and everything's going to work out. Um, I was a fool to get angry and get flustered and frustrated. So um, I want you to know that you're safe. No matter where you are, you're safe in the arms of Jesus and that he has your back. He's gone before you. He's right next to you. He's already covered you. He's covered your past. Um, and so, yeah, that's what I would want you to walk away from, know that you're safe. Yeah, man. Thank you so much, uh, Darius. Uh, really do appreciate you you sitting down and, and talking with me uh, about your album, Lost and Found. And again, you guys can get a chance to check it out. Uh, Darius, yes, not Darius, Darius. Right. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, Darius, like Harris with the D in front of it. Yeah. <laughs> right, exactly. Darius, thanks so much for uh, taking the time to do this. Uh, big ups to Rachel as well for helping me put the, this together, your manager. Yeah, Rach. Yeah, and uh, we will definitely have these two songs uh, on the playlist. So, again, check out the um, the show notes. Yes, the show notes. And thank you, uh, Darius, again for for being a part of this and uh, we hope to see you again and, and connect again and, and do some more interviews in the future with new music excellent thank you Anthony so much I appreciate you all thank you for having me no problem coming up we have our DIT classic and of course uh, still two more songs to, to get you through um, but uh, this is the refill and remember again once again the playlist and all the songs that you're going to that you've heard on this episode will be available in the playlist that we're going to be putting together and links will be available in the show notes this is the refill this is the refill podcast this is the refill podcast this is daughter of eve from the uk and she's going to explain uh the meaning behind this song and also what she wants you to walk away with after listening to it here is dream profound on the refill Beneath I cannot see Leaving trails, colors move We're at this sky All I see is blue, purple, orange and gray Sky of flame, sunset so soon Leaving, burning and burning. It's, it's weird, I wrote some of it as a poem so at the end of the song, there's a spoken word part, um, which just kind of ended up there. Um, but I wrote a lot of it on a plane, which sounds quite strange. Um, so again, I was like just thinking and looking out the window. And you know, when you're flying over the clouds and you're seeing all these different colors. And at one point I was thinking, oh, it looks like it could be water, but it also looks like it could be clouds. So that's kind of where that first line, cloud or water beneath I cannot see, that's where that came in. Um, and then just kind of my thoughts and my musings. Um, and then this weird feeling of we're in the sky and it was getting dark, but I couldn't see any stars. So it was literally like, where are the stars? Um, I want to be able to see 
more while I'm up here. Um, yeah, and then the poem came from, I think I might have written the poem at a different point and put them together because they felt like they fit really well. Um, and it's just about being able to follow God when you can't, when you feel like you can't see his hand, trust in his heart. That's kind of the main um, line of the poem. So after you, during, actually while you're listening to the song and after you've listened to it, I would love the listeners to just feel and to dream and to think. Um, I feel like it's quite a reflective song. So I want you to be able to reflect, maybe pray. Um, yeah, and just feel some calm and ease. Thank you so much to Daughter of Eve for taking the time to, to do that interview. Uh, this is The Refill and... This is the podcast where you get to refill your playlist with some great Christian music uh, or rediscover some real amazing classics. And uh, that's what we're about to get into this Digging in the Classics segment. And uh, I can't wait for you to hear this track. This is the Refill Podcast. This is the Refill Podcast. I was sitting and trying to think of uh, what song I should do for this segment. And, you know, if you have any suggestions, please let me know. Uh, let us know on our socials. But, man, I'm so excited. We got a chance to do the song and get the interview as well. From her 1980 album, Rejoice, here is Pastor Shirley Caesar with Satan, You're a Liar. You said I'd never make it. You said I wouldn't last. You said I'd be returning to my actions of the past. With the crowds I used to run with, saying the things I used to say. But I wish you'd stand back and take a look at me today. Say that you're a liar. You're a liar. You should know by now. I know you are a liar. That's one thing you can't deny. You're the father of every lie. You're a liar. Okay, one of the main reasons why I chose to record Satan, You're a Liar many years ago is because I like for the listener be able to see, not just hear, but see what the song is saying. One of the first verses says, you said I'd never make it. You said I wouldn't last. You said I'd be returning to my actions of the past. Uh, with the crowd to run with saying those ugly things I used to say. But I wish you'd stand back and take a look at me, Satan, you're a liar. My favorite verse is the last verse. Um, I know you're everything in this world except my friend. And still, you have the courage, the nerve to come around and bother me again. Uh, saying, let me see, I'm not born again and that heaven is not a reality. But if Jesus Christ is not the Son of God, Satan, listen good to me. You are a liar. You got to see it. And that was the reason why I recorded Satan, You're a Liar, because I could actually see myself telling the devil that. I had to let that one play just a little bit longer. Uh, big tune. Don't don't get it twisted. Uh, thank you so much to Pastor Shirley Caesar for taking the time to sit down with me and, and talk about this song. And also thanks to her E1 team as well for putting this together. Really do appreciate it. I wasn't born again. This is the Refill Podcast. This is the Refill Podcast.
head of us back into your arms I am astounded to silence by the thought of your design The way you brought us back to life in the moment Okay, so this was my first song. I remember being at work one day and I had some downtime. And I was talking to a friend and he was just encouraging me to write more. I was in this weird season when I was wondering if God was ever gonna use my gifts, if I was good enough to write music or sing and all of these um, things that I was dealing with in my mind mentally. Um, so I remember that day just wanting to write from um, that place of the, those insecurities, but from the place of truth as well. Her love beyond any bounds has raised us from the ground and from a tomb it came and called me out. A kind of grace that could take this sin a lost and lame And say this is the one I came to save in the moment. I want people to know that we've been set free from everything that society labels us with. And um, this isn't to jump left field and say like, oh, no, um, no labels. I'm not a man, I'm not a woman, <laughs> nothing like that. But to uh, not label yourself as less of a person when you haven't accomplished something in your life. I want people to know that Jesus Christ set them free from, from everything, the lies in their mind, the anxiety that we battle with as um, people, depression, stress. We were freed from all of that when he said it was finished. Um, the song is to encourage the broken. The song is to encourage those who feel like they aren't seen or loved because you are. Like Jesus, showed you that you were loved. He showed you that you were cared for when he died for you. He showed you that you were enough. That's Bianca Mosiah, and thanks to her for taking the time to talk with me about her song, In The Moment. Any Houdini, I'm about to disappear, but before I go, remember to follow us on Instagram and Twitter, at Overflow Refill. The playlist link for all the songs to this episode available in the show notes playing us out is d johnson thanks to all my guests thanks to the team big ups to my son daddy loves you and to my wife bibs this last one's for you saints up we was kids playing by the park at the zoo back in school grade two always knew you were very smart after that we was in grade five playing hide and seek running down the street so alive in college you were better than the best of them all of my time and dedication in you i invested in always smiling girl you ain't stressing them you have my heart girl forget the rest of them why you questioning 